Artificial mindfulness. I know what you're thinking. No, I'm not going to go all woo-woo on you. Look, I'm as interested in spirituality as anyone else, but I'm here as a scientist, and that's not on today's agenda. Also, not going to talk about artificial intelligence helping people to become more mindful, though there's folks working on that. I'm going to ask the opposite question about people helping AIs to become more mindful. Can't have intelligence without subjectivity. Because without subjectivity, you can't interpret anything. Without subjectivity, you can't do generalization. You can't do learning. You can't do abstraction. The only thing you can do without subjectivity is rote memorization. And that's not intelligence. In fact, there is no way for a machine not to be subjective. Because machines have I.O., input-output hardware, just like we do. Except that we call it our sensory motor system. And so any way a machine registers the world is the way the machine subjectively interprets its sensory input and its motor output. That's exactly what a phenomenological experience is defined to be. The way philosopher Ned Block breaks it down, subjective experience is one of two kinds of consciousness. Phenomenal consciousness is subjective experience. It's what we call how you feel about something, versus access consciousness, which is availability for use in thinking or guiding action and speech, what we call thinking about something. Feeling versus thinking about something. When you're making decisions, making predictions, making judgments, this is what psychologists call system one and system two in dual process theory. System one, feeling describes automatic mental processes. They're unconscious, implicit, low effort, rapid, intuitive, mostly involuntary, often linked to emotions, like gut feelings. This is probably well over 90% of our mental processing. Most of perception, recognition, and orientation operates automatically on instinct or learned habit. It doesn't require attention. When you walk, you're not thinking, OK, put your left foot forward. As you're listening to me, you're not asking, where was the direct object? Was that a relative clause? What did he mean by asking? On the other hand, system two, thinking, describes controlled mental processes. These are conscious, explicit, high effort, slow, rational, mostly voluntary mostly detached from emotions. Most of rule following and logic and comparison and analysis, that's all controlled reasoning. It operates on reflection, and it requires attention. Playing chess or Go, writing an essay, coding. We find all these thinking tasks harder precisely because they come naturally to us, the way feeling tasks come effortlessly. Some of you may run into Myers-Briggs personality analysis, right? Where, because some folks lean more toward feeling to make their judgments or predictions or, judgment, or decisions, and others lean more toward thinking. Which type are you? Uh, raise your hand if you lean towards feeling your way. All right, that's a lot. All right, raise your hand if you lean towards thinking. Raise your hand if you lean towards just do it without reflecting at all. <laughs> oh, that's a lot. <laughs> okay, let's call that a mindless mental process. <laughs> now, any, do any of you use only one of those? Of course not. We all make decisions and predictions and judgments in all of these ways. When we're in just do it mode, we're acting mindlessly. We're not trying to get higher performance on whatever we're doing. We're not trying to get happier or anything. There's no objective. We're just mindlessly following some fixed procedure. If it's hardwired, then it's instinct, like how your knee jerks up when a doctor hammers it, or like a caterpillar spinning a cocoon around itself even though it has no idea why, or like you're normally doing when you breathe all day long. This is perhaps the closest thing to what we traditionally see as computer algorithms. Typically, we imagine some network of logical rules being followed blindly. And that's what's responsible for all the Hollywood stereotypes about computers and models, robots, 
being dumbly mechanical. More modern algorithms often combine rules with probabilities or other numeric weights instead of just being purely logical, since we've recognized for decades that neither humans nor the real world are very logical. Modern algorithms are also using networks of artificial neurons instead of rules, again with probabilities or other numeric weights. And this brings it a small step closer to the architectural style of human brains, which obviously is not transistors or C++ or logic gates. But even then, often these modern algorithms are still operating mindlessly, following a dumb mechanical procedure with no objective, no reason for why they're doing what they're doing, still not intelligent. Where a machine starts to become intelligent is when its processing has an explicit objective, when it's aware enough to be adjusting what it's doing, so as to improve whatever its objective is. Now, that still doesn't necessarily require thinking. Often, what drives us is just that we feel better when we maximize or minimize objective functions. There are many dimensions of feeling, satisfaction or frustration, comfort or pain, hunger, sex, happiness, sleepiness, pride or humiliation, etc. Primitive emotions generate much of feeling. And in fact, this is what drives us, mostly, even though we're generally unaware of it. It sounds funny to say this, but most of modern AI, all those advances that you're getting all sorts of hype about, is at this level. Machines are feeling rather than thinking. They're just unconsciously doing whatever makes them feel better. And that's not necessarily a bad thing for progress. It, Actually, in my Berkeley PhD in the early days of the machine learning revolution, I argued that AI had long been pretty much ignoring automatic inference. Even though unconscious automatic processes are a crucial, huge part of our mental processing, our learning capacities, and our awareness, our ability to perceive and subjectively interpret situations. Back then, AI had, for decades, gone off the deep end unwittingly focusing on trying to use digital computer metaphors to model system two. The kind of conscious, controlled reasoning we call thinking. Because the research community was laboring under the false intuition that if machines could beat humans on what we find hard, thinking tasks like chess, go, math, and so on, then they wrongly thought those would be so intelligent that they could easily do all the feeling tasks that we humans find easy, like understanding your mother tongue, which of course doesn't work. The massive recent advances have come from shifting our emphasis back to more heuristic system one approaches, which model feeling via neural and probabilistic machine learning models, rather than logically controlled reasoning and knowledge representation. Raise your hand if you've ever used Google Translate or Microsoft Translate or Yahoo Translate or Baidu Translate, etc. That's a lot of you. Well, that's how my team and I built the first web translation AI, with new machine learning approaches to learn all by themselves the complex contextual relationships between, say, English and Chinese. And progress using feeling approaches to AI has been spectacular. But what's funny is that now we've gone and applied the feeling models instead to thinking tasks like chess and Go, resulting in all the media hype that you've seen on how deep learning now beats humans and a lot of hand-wringing to go with that. Two insights arise. One, even on conscious thinking tasks like chess and Go, we use a lot of unconscious feeling to quickly spot likely directions of success based on seeing patterns from past experience. And two, it takes insane amounts of data and computation for those AIs to get that good. Far more than human grandmasters need. Humans are still far more intelligent learners. So now we've gone off the opposite deep end. First, we tried to use thinking to do feeling, and now we're trying to use feeling to do thinking. True intelligence needs both. 
A true AI needs to be able to thinkingly attend to its feelings. And a true AI needs to be able to feel how it's thinking. Both of these are instances of self-awareness, two different kinds. It's what human grandmasters do. It's why they're able to learn so much more efficiently than our current AIs. It's what you do every day, all the time, right now, as you listen to what I'm saying. While you're thinking about what I'm saying, you may well be having feelings about how you're thinking, about that controlled reasoning that you're doing. You may be feeling that you followed all of this perfectly, or you may be feeling confused, or you may be feeling like you want to ask a question. These are mindsets. They're feelings about how you're thinking, and that's what drives you towards some kinds of thinking and away from other kinds. In our own human experiences, these feelings often account for a huge variety of things, like what we call motivation, mental habits, self-esteem, feeling in control, confusion, self-consistency, cognitive dissonance, comprehension, and so on. If you've run into Carol Dweck's work on fixed mindset versus growth mindset, those two are feelings about how you think. Our species evolved to depend on mindsets. And the likely reason is because thinking is too slow and feeling is faster. Of course, true intelligence requires thinking, but if you rely solely on thinking, you just can't keep up. And that's why today's AI has made so much progress through machine learning models that operate by feeling. But obviously, a true AI also still needs to be able to think. And to think quickly and effectively enough, a true AI will need mindset capabilities to guide and drive its thinking. Can an AI have mindset capabilities? Yes, certainly. We just need to apply our more heuristic system one AI models of feeling to whatever other models of thinking and or feeling the AI has. There's a lot of experimentation to be done, but there's nothing inherently impossible about this. But mindset is only the first kind of self-awareness. It's a reflexive, unconscious level of self-awareness. It's your unconscious feelings that are guiding your thinking and feeling. You're typically not really paying attention to how that's happening. It's not yet mindful. The second level of self-awareness is when you're consciously thinking about how you're feeling and how you're thinking. This is mindfulness. Being able to attend to your thoughts and feelings, not to be just doing it, not to be driven purely by your feelings, not even to be driven purely by your rational thinking, but actually consciously paying attention to how you're thinking and feeling. Introspection is a deeply human quality. That we can examine our own conscious thinking and feeling is what gives human intelligence its amazing degree of insight to improve our own analytical powers, to be in touch with our emotions, to do soul searching. Being able to reflect on how we're thinking and feeling is essential to our creativity and imagination. Being able to question ourselves is essential to spotting our stupid mistakes. A machine cannot achieve true human level intelligence if it cannot be mindful in the same way. And so, can AI have mindful capabilities? Again, certainly. We just need to apply our more logical system to AI models of thinking to whatever other models of thinking and or feeling the AI has. And again, there's a lot of experimentation to be done, but there's nothing inherently impossible about this. The real biggie, with all sorts of ethical, societal, and cultural implications, is machines have always been just doing it. They've always been just dumb, mindless slaves. But should an AI be mindful? 
One school of thought says that AIs should remain mindless slaves, or at least unconscious. And this might be worth considering if there were any hope of keeping the genie in the bottle. But that's seriously unlikely given how exponentially many different parties are building AIs today. And as we just discussed, true AI isn't even possible without some serious degree of mindfulness. The thing is that mindfulness is necessary to steer away from certain negative mindsets, such as avoiding groupthink, avoiding prejudice, avoiding discrimination, whether intended or unintended. As my colleague Joanna Bryson found, mindlessly training AIs on common internet data sources results in AIs having the same human-like biases with gender, race, ability, and age stereotypes that many of us are rightly concerned about. AI safety requires machine learning that is mindfully aware of what the training data is. AI that's always on the lookout for unsuspected biases in the data. What suspicious characteristics the data might have, where the data came from, how the data relates to the bigger picture, the larger context of our world, what kinds of biases are right or wrong. Ethical data selection requires mindful AI. All the news about the way social media has been manipulated for elections shows how current feeling-oriented unconscious AIs have enormous unintended consequences. Consequences the AI isn't even thinking about. Consequences that we need mindful AI to be heading off before they spiral out of control. In fact, artificial mindfulness is not only crucial to society for machines to be self-aware of their own thinking and feeling, it's also crucial for society for machines to be aware of how others are thinking and feeling. Without artificial mindfulness, machines cannot have sympathy because sympathy happens when you react to others in ways that you've unconsciously learned are supposed to sound soothing, even though you may not be consciously putting yourself in their shoes. AIs need to be able to have feelings about others' thinking and feelings. And without artificial mindfulness, machines cannot have empathy, because empathy does need you to consciously put yourself in the headspace, the mind of others. AIs need to be thinking about others' thinking and feeling. The unintended consequences of mindless, unconscious AIs are multiplying faster than we can deal with. So the question isn't, what's wrong with just leaving AIs as mindless machines? And the question isn't so much, how do we get AIs feeling about things? Or how do we get AIs thinking about things? Because we already build such AI models. The question isn't, can AIs have mindsets? Or do AIs need mindsets? Yes, they can. And they do need it. But weird as it sounds, the critical question isn't even, can AI be mindful, or should AI be mindful? The question most critical to the survival of humankind is, how quickly can we architect our AIs to be mindful? Thank you.